let's dive in. What is nesting? So a quick recap of the basics. When referred to in a manufacturing sense, nesting describes the process of laying out cutting patterns or shapes uh, to help minimize material waste. The nesting process is used in a wide variety of manufacturing applications and materials, uh, such as ferrous, non-ferrous metals, uh, fabric cutting, plastics, yeah, advanced materials, and specifically related to our session today, uh, woodworking. This is our HOMAG N500 CNC router. CNC routers have been around for a long time. So the machine format and design is by no means new. It's known as a CNC router largely due to the fact that it has a flat surface or table uh, to hold the material that's required to be processed. A machining center uh, would have a rail and pod design similar uh, instead of a flat table uh, to hold materials that have already been pre-sized. So thanks to the increase in popularity of the nesting process in the woodworking industry, CNC routers are often now referred to as nesting machines. So why is nesting so popular? What is it about nesting that makes it so popular? The CNC router produces parts with their predictable reliability while performing a variety of machining operations on those parts. But the CNC router also great reduces the need for rework due to mistakes or damaged parts. As the machine technologies have advanced, so have the potential benefits of nesting on a CNC router. Faster setup times, uh, throughput, speed, efficiency, these are all benefits based on the increases in technology. So let's take a look at some of the specific benefits of nesting and what it can do for you. There's a singular machining process which minimizes labor, operator dependence, and operator fatigue. There's no manual machinery to set up. You don't have fences on a saw or shape to constantly adjust and go back to that setting once it's moved. You get precise machining, right? Perimeter routing, dado, and drilling is all precise controlled by the CNC. You get a quality product from accurate, efficient machining. There's no unnecessary part handling, which reduces damage to the parts and also rework. You get accurate machining simplified by the assembly process down the road because the better they're machined, the easier they go, to, they go together down the line. And you get reduced tooling cost due to the mechanical feed versus a manual feed process. So is it really that simple? Do I just put a sheet up there and press go? No, not quite. To achieve efficient nesting, there are several important ingredients that when combined correctly, create the best overall recipe. We refer to these ingredients as the keys to successful nested maced manufacturing. So let's take a look. Software. Different software handles nesting of parts in different ways. Skin cutting, tabbing, small parts first, block versus true shape nesting, common toolpath or stay down cutting. Machine table design. Machines can be quite different in the design philosophy. So what works best for nesting? Vacuum pump and plumbing. How to maximize what you've got. Altitude, and an often an overlooked yet important piece of the puzzle. Spoil board care and material used. Also a really important piece of this puzzle. Tooling and clamping. 
the correct tool can make a world of difference to the quality and productivity of the machine. Don't ignore the tool holders. Material type to be cut. Surface material, core type, orientation can all affect nesting efficiency. And material handling, innovative ways to reduce chip to chip time with less operator handling, allowing the automation to pace productivity. So let's drill down on these to learn more, starting with software. Software plays an important part of the overall process of nesting on a CNC router. Good software can help sometimes overcome deficiencies in machine configuration or design. Does your software allow for cutting small parts first? Does your software allow skin cutting or tabbing? Does your software allow for helical interpolation? And does your software allow for lead in and lead out or ramp leading lead out specifically? This is a screenshot of Woodwop, HOMAC's CNC programming system that comes included with our machines. Software will do the best mathematical job using an algorithm to optimize your nesting. But sometimes you may need to adjust the result depending on your machine's design and capability. All machines are not created the same. And the design can affect the results you achieve greatly. If you are having problems with small parts cutting, try skin cutting them or cutting them first while the vacuum is at its greatest. Realizing that many companies use more than one piece of software, this shows how Woodwop is able to interface with other formats. If your customer sends you a DXF file, for example, you don't need to redraw them as you can import them directly into Woodwop. If you are an existing AlphaCam user, for example, AlphaCam has a direct connection by a post processor to Woodwop. If you're producing solid models, there are direct links to Woodwop from some of the world's leading 3D CAD systems, such as SolidWorks, etc. The key here is to choose software that ticks all the boxes for you. Cost, ease of use, functionality, and scalability. You want to avoid what we refer to as box on the shelf anxiety. Machine design. Hauling materials to a job site requires the correct vehicle designed for that application. So if you're a Ford person, there is an F-150, uh, there's an F-250, uh, there's an F-350, right-sized for the job at hand. I also think they've reintroduced the entry-level Ranger, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Successful nested-based manufacturing is no different, and a key, therefore, is the design of the CNC router overall, and specifically, its table. They are not all the same. However, the design can have a profound effect on the overall result. Balancing or spreading the vacuum flow over the entire surface area is key. If you don't distribute the vacuum evenly, you will have areas of the table that have strong vacuum hold down and others that do not. Having a single vacuum port in the center of the table or a corner, for example, would not provide a balanced solution. Back to the subject of software. I can state with confidence that software does not know 
or care what type of nested machine you have. Software will use this algorithm to find the best nesting result possible. And Murphy's Law, there's always Murphy's Law, Murphy's Law dictates that software will put the smallest parts in the areas of the table where you have the least amount of vacuum. Given a balanced design helps avoid this becoming an issue. Also, having multiple large diameter ports allow for better overall vacuum and airflow. Getting most out of the available vacuum has a lot to do with how the vacuum is delivered to the machine. To understand this better, let's use the example of a fire engine. The fire engine is dispatched to a fire. Upon arrival, the crew jumps out and grabs the hose. Ask yourself this, what is best for extinguishing the fire? Would the crew have success putting out the fire with a small green garden hose or a large diameter hose specifically designed to allow the maximum amount of water to be applied to douse the fire? It does not matter how much water they have to put to the problem, the delivery system would be the restriction as efficient fluid dynamics is dictated by the size of the delivery system. Smart TVs, phones, watches, washing machines, refrigerators. We live in a digital world. That being the case, why would today's CNC routers be any different? Many of today's CNC routers have segmented tables with automatic selectable zones that are chosen by the machine based on the size of the material to be nested. For example, a machine equipped with a five by 12 table would have the ability to automatically close off around a four by eight sheet of material, thus maximizing the available vacuum, meaning the best hold down possible. This also speeds up productivity as the operator is not spending precious machining time <laughs> laying down pieces of laminate or other materials around that sheet to try and stop vacuum wastage. On the subject of vacuum, vacuum pumps and plumbing. On this slide on the far right, you will see how piping from two vacuum pumps connect into a single larger hose. Remember our fluid dynamics lesson. The larger diameter main line is paramount to allow the correct combined flow of multiple pumps. If the hose diameter is not increased, you risk losing vacuum efficiency, similar to putting your hand over the end of the hose on your vacuum cleaner at home. You starve the vacuum. Remember, on a CNC router, vacuum is all about the amount of volume and velocity achieved. It is very important to right size the vacuum pump or pumps for the application, as well as choosing the right type of vacuum pump overall, carbon vein, rotary claw, or liquid ring, for example. Vacuum and how it's delivered is one of the most important pieces of the nesting recipe and is therefore another key to successful nested-based manufacturing. Altitude, my favorite. Vacuum is generally stated relative to atmospheric pressure at sea level. However, the elevation at the location of the installation can have a profound effect on the efficiency of the vacuum pump and ultimately the amount of hold down achieved 
on the CNC router. As an example, a vacuum pump installed in beautiful Miami, Florida at sea level would produce a great deal more vacuum than the exact same vacuum pump installed in Denver, Colorado. 29.92 inches of mercury is considered as the maximum theoretical vacuum at sea level. So as a rule, assume that for every increase in 1,000 foot of elevation above sea level, the vacuum pressure will decrease by one inch of mercury. To overcome this, you would need to add more vacuum. This is obviously, therefore, another one of those keys we need to look at. Spoil boards. Spoil boards are one of the most overlooked parts of the nesting process, yet they play a crucial role in successful nested-based manufacturing and as such are another key. Using the correct fly cutter, making sure the spindle is perpendicular to the table, not taking too much off at once, and not trying to cut the spore board too fast when surfacing. Using MDF, not LDF. MDF usually ranges from 45 to 50 pounds, something you would pick up at the local home improvement store. But try and use something in the lower range of the MDF scale. The extra porosity will help with small parts hold down, but will not bleed air like MDF does. Below 40.5 pounds is widely considered LDF, although there are MDF products out there known as ultralight MDF that are also often used as spoil boards, but they are still MDF. 50 pounds or higher would typically signify HDF, which would be great for manufacturing MDF doors that will be painted or membrane pressed. However, not so good for spoil boards. The density of the board would restrict airflow. Ultimately, you are trying to create the best overall recipe, vacuum flow, measured resistance and durability. This is after all a consumable material. If you have issues with part hold down, sealing the edge of the spoil board may help. Don't edge band it, that makes no sense. Painting the edge works best by using a roller with some white gloss paint, something you would use for trim at home. Paint the edges while the bunk is still stacked together like you see on this slide. And when dry, the paint will seal the edge and give the added benefit of a visual reminder to the operator when the board approaches time for replacement. Here's a really good one. Cover the spoil board at night and over lunch breaks, etc. Either leave the next sheet to be cut on there or designate a cover sheet that can be used again and again. Not only will this help stop the spoil board cupping because the weight of the sheet will help prevent that, it will also stop the fine dust in the air settling on the spoil board when the machine is idle or overnight. Clean the spoil board very well between each cut. If you don't have a machine with an automated handling system that does this for you, or if you don't have sufficient dust collection, make sure the spoil board is very clean before the nest, the next nesting, excuse me, the next sheet. This will obviously provide more hold down and will prevent the fine dust compacting into the open fibers of the spoil board, resulting in loss of hold down. Project into the spoil board 
only so you can see the ghost cut. No more than that. The deeper you cut into the spoil board, the more frequently you will have to surface the board, resulting in using the board up quicker. The deeper the projection will also result in a loss of vacuum, leakage between the bottom of the sheet to be cut and the spoil board. Make sure your tool length is very accurate. If your machine has an automated tool length device, use it. As a barometer, starting with three quarter inch NDF spoil board, 12 thou worth of average uh, surface and projection, uh, four thou average cutting projection, after the initial surfacing reduction where you remove sealant from both sides of the spoil board, let me say that again, both sides of the spoil board, you should achieve approximately 22 surface impasses before disposing of that board. Tooling and clamping. Tooling has a great influence on the outcome of nesting and thus is another key. Using good geometry that made by a quality tooling company can not only provide a better cut quality, but also affect how productive your machine can be overall. Lesser tooling will wear quicker, produce poor edge quality or tear out forcing the operator to reduce speeds to compensate. Reducing feed speed increases tool wear, causing loss of production per tool, additional tool changes, and lost productivity overall. Tooling will also have a direct result on part hold down as tooling applies lateral load during the cutting process. As the tool dulls, the lateral load or the pushing force increases and may result in part movement. Most good quality tools for nesting cost, yeah, let's say 60 to $70 per tool, give or take. Or looking at it another way, approximately $1 per sheet on average. However, there are newer tools available that more than double the traditional life expectancy. So don't skimp on the tool. It will cost you far more bigger picture if you do. Heat and vibration are the nemesis of a router spindle, one of the most expensive components on a CNC router. Check your tool holders and collets regularly. They are a consumable after all. Replacing regularly used collets every six months can help provide or prevent multiple issues and downtime. The standard nut and collet type tool holders work well. However, it's important to change out the spring collets often and do not mix and match the nuts with different tool holders as they are a balanced set. Clean them regularly to remove dust buildup, both from the grooves in the collet and also the tightening lugs on the nut. When using the standard nut and collet type tool holder, use a torque wrench like can be seen on the photograph on the left there to tighten the nut to the correct specified torque setting. Over tightening will deform the collet, putting the tool out of concentric or out of center and can have a multitude of negative results. The torque wrench will be one of the best $175 investments you can ever make for a CNC router. For machines that are nesting for longer periods of time, or that use their router spindles at higher RPM for longer periods of time, look at either using a heat shrink or hydraulic ETP type tool holder. The initial cost will be higher 
However, over time, the overall cost can be significantly less given the potential damage out of balance or concentric tooling can do to a precision router spindle. Material to be cut. Different materials require different feeds and speeds to be programmed. For example, plywood would differ greatly to yeah, MDF. Particle board will differ greatly to a laminate. Solid surface will do, differ greatly to a composite material, for example. Calculating the feeds, your inches per minute or your meters per minute, and the speed in RPM relative to material being cut is another key to successful nested base manufacturing. Tooling manufacturers use a form formula called chip load to determine or help determine a starting point for feeds and speeds. Different tooling manufacturers have their own specific tool designs and geometries. So the relationship you have with your tooling supplier is really important. That relationship and the advice dialogue that takes place is another key to successful nested base manufacturing. In most cases for nesting, clang cutting is best. When clang cutting, the chip width starts from maximum and decreases. So the heat generated will more likely transfer to the chip instead of the tool. Clang cutting also creates a cleaner shear angle, which causes tool rub to be less, and as a result, increases your tool life, saving you money, and also the machine will stay productive longer with that tool. Material handling. Material handling boosts your overall productivity by reducing your chip-to-chip -chip time between actual cutting of the sheet. Without a material handling solution, once the machine finishes nesting a sheet of material, the machine stops for the duration of the time it takes the operator to remove the finished parts, remove the remaining debris, the skeleton and offcuts, remove the dust, clean the spore board before the sequence can be repeated and loaded for the next board. This is commonly referred to as chip to chip time. Adding a handling solution helps to reduce this chip to chip time, thus increasing your throughput and productivity. There are a wide range of material handling solutions available for CNC routers today. Internal of styles, uh, we refer these handling solutions as concepts. The basic concept PO or push out is what PO means, would require the machine to be loaded by the operator using a vacuum lift as an example or a scissor lifter. Uh, then the machine would automatically handle the outfeeding of the material, cleaning of the scoreboard in advance of the next sheet being loaded by the operator. This solution would provide some automation benefit by helping with the unloading and cleaning of the machine. However, it's dependent on the operator's overall efficiency to keep up with the machine loading during the process. Concept two, concept two R, concept three, or concept three R now adds automatic loading of the machine, providing more of a just-in-time production cell. This would then reduce the reliance on the operator to keep up with production, or stated another way, the machine paces the overall productivity. Calculating throughput productivity of a nested base CNC router comes down to some basic math given certain parameters that you already know. Overall cycle time equals loading time plus machining time plus unloading time plus reloading time divided by the available minutes for manufacturing available. So how many hours you work in a day. 
So this slide provides you a visual guide of this arithmetic. So we can take a look at a couple of examples. A basic nesting solution with no automation requiring, requiring the operator to load, clean, and reload manually may have a combined cycle time of 10 minutes. So you can see on the left column there, 10 minutes. So that would equate to five minutes of cutting time and say five minutes to destack, clean, and reload, right? So that would yield in this scenario, 48 sheets per eight hour shift. Now, a concept two machine that handles the loading, unloading, and cleaning automatically would have a combined cycle time for the same nested pattern of approximately six minutes, resulting in a yield of over 80 sheets in an eight hour shift. So thanks to the automated handling system, this significant increase in productivity also reduces operator fatigue to where the operator could possibly perform a secondary function while the machine is nesting. So while we take a moment to watch some nesting action here on the video, here's a recap of what we've covered in this web session. We've covered the importance of software to the overall nesting solution. How the design of, of a machine can greatly affect how materials are held down, resulting in changes to the machine's overall productivity. We looked at vacuum in detail and how to use it best and maximize the results <laughs> while keeping an eye on altitude. We've shared some best practices with regards to spoil board type, use, and care. We've examined the different types of tool holders and tooling parameters and how best to maximize not only your tooling costs, but also minimize wear and tear on your machine. We looked at how different materials need different speeds and speeds and the importance of chip load and how it affects this process. And then last but no means least, we showed how automated handling systems can supercharge the nesting process and overall productivity. These are the keys to successful nested based manufacturing.